there are things that make the creative and cultural sector quite different and that every day people are involved in the act of creation. They're in fact in the act of innovation. They need to change what they're doing in order to be successful. Equally, the people involved in it are often involved quite passionately in the work that they're doing. And so the creative sectors are different in that it's not a job to many people, it's a calling. Sad as well as, um, is, a, is a business and uh, so it's like other kind of businesses, has the same kind of issues um, and requirements from a leader. But then in addition, we have the extra uh, responsibility or delight of creating art and also kind of playing part, part of the, uh, or contributing to the cultural life of our city. Putting creativity right at the heart and creativity being the driver of what you do means that you're prepared to be surprised and surprise other people and risk is part of everyday life. Um, so I think people who are working in culture are really good at facing up to and handling risk. It's quite a difficult time for the cultural sector. In the subsidised sector, money is being cut all the time. And so a lot of organisations who have been used to public sub subsidy have, uh, are needing to change their business models very, very quickly. In the wider world of the creative industries, we've got digitisation, we've got sort of huge global changes in, in terms of the way culture is created. Big issues around big data and audiences and selling tickets and all those things. So I think the most important thing is to be agile and to be able to make change quickly and to respond to the external world. I think particularly now, with the way in which funding has changed, the way in which the political landscape is so fluid, that we need cultural leaders who are able to think in new ways, to be quick on their feet, to find new alliances and be able to look ahead um, and to think about where they're going to be irrespective of the challenges to funding, irrespective of the changes in the political landscape. And that takes a great deal of strength and foresight, but it also takes an understanding of, of the cultural sector. In the last decade, seen a lot of women setting up their own businesses and doing extremely well because they can create those businesses on their terms. So I think there's much to learn here um, and now about, about that and what will be interesting is to see how those organisations evolve under those women um, because they haven't inherited those businesses from men. It's interesting to see that some women are forging ahead with new models of leadership. Uh, not only in a more collaborative approach to the way they lead, but actually looking at working patterns, looking at ways in which leadership responsibility be shared, which means different structured, but also questioning things like the long working hours culture that exists. I think it's really important that we see more women in those key positions and more women in the boardrooms uh, of our key cultural organisations, so that Women's agency is being recognised, it's being listened to, and women have the space to be able to initiate shifts and changes. Just look at what Jude Kelly's done at the South Bank Centre. She's made that a really vibrant space. She's introduced some extraordinary things like the ballroom. Being in institutions where there are women running down the backbone, the hierarchical backbone of the organisation and watching those organisations thrive and find new ways of building partnerships, new ways of, of reaching out into communities has been deeply inspiring. And it's just the beginning. You know, women are just beginning to find the foothold that was long overdue in leadership. And I get a sense that it is gonna be a golden period for the culture sector as we explore that more.